African IGF Multi Advisory Group for the successful organization of the 2022 edition of the African IGF in Lilongwe, Malawi. Uh, I would like also to welcome the Honorable Parliamentarians from our member states that are present today. The government representatives, private sector, civil society, academia, our friends of the fourth estate, as well as the representatives of the regional and international organizations. As a continent, we are pleased to host the Global Internet Governance Forum in Africa, which follows the successful hosting of the World Telecommunications Development Conference, which shows indeed the readiness of Africa to contribute to global digital policy debates. Our leaders have recognized the digital transformation as a driver for social economic development to, to help us attain the Agenda 2063 and the UN Sustainable Development Goals by adopting the Digital Transformation Strategy for Africa in 2020 as the master plan that will guide our digital agenda up to 2030. As part of implementation of the Digital Transformation Strategy for Africa, I know a number of initiatives are going in on at our members, in our member states at national level, but also at a continental level, we have been coordinating a number of key initiatives. I will mention a few. The Continental Data Policy Framework has been developed and adopted by the AU Summit in February this year, as well as the AU Interoperability Framework for Digital ID. Work is also ongoing to develop a continental harmonization strategy to have our policies and regulations harmonized. And all these three frameworks are very key to provide the enabling environment and contribute to the realization of the digital single market as part of implementation of the African continental free trade area. In addition to that, we have also been working on digitalizing the, our critical sectors. A draft AU, an AU digital education strategy has been adopted by our ministers responsible for education. We are now working on finalizing the AU digital strategies for agriculture and health. While we are working on, uh, while we are working on all this, we would also like to make sure that uh, our digitalization and uh, connectivity is safe. So we have developed a child online safety and empowerment policy, which is being finalized, and work is also ongoing to develop a continental cyber security strategy. As you are aware, I think through the PREDA project also, we've been supporting uh, organization of internet governance forums at national, regional, and continental levels. On the infrastructure part, we have also been implementing our uh, ICT infrastructure project through the Program for Infrastructure Development for Africa. And a number of ICT projects have been identified in the second PIDA Priority Action Plan. Ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, I would like to invite all stakeholders to come together and collaborate to realize universally affordable, meaningful broadband internet connectivity in Africa. And I thank everyone who contributed to the organization of this session. I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bayangana.
and uh, now uh, yield the floor to my good friend uh, Maktar Yadali to tell us uh, what is going on in ECA. Uh, Maktar, please. Good yeah, good friend. <laughs> Maktar Sek. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's no problem. <laughs> Mokhtar is a Mokhtar. <laughs> Th thank you very much uh, uh, for inviting uh, ECA as co-organizer of this session. First of all, uh, on behalf of uh, the Acting Executive Secretary of uh, e e Economic Commission for Africa, I would like to welcome you to this uh, meeting and welcome you also in ECA compound who hosting this uh, 17 IGF in collaboration with uh, UNDESA in support to the government of uh, Ethiopia. As you know, the work of ECA in the internet governance uh, is uh, very important because one of our mandate is to support African country to achieve their sustainable development. And uh, if you read uh, very well uh, the SDG 2030, Technology is a means of implementation of the 17 goal. Why it is important to discuss the issue of technology, how African country can appropriate this technology, how this technology can help to achieve this SDG goal, as well as the, as the achievement of the AU 26.3 agenda. We have organized uh, this uh, African internet governance this year, and we can have a uh, a status of the continent, the landscape of ICT in the continent. As you know, we have uh, quite progress have been made in the continent. We have uh, now 33% connectivity internet in the continent. But you have to remind there's still uh, 871 million people unconnected. And we have to find a way to connect these people by 2030. And we are facing several challenges. The first, it is uh, we should build this infrastructure. Uh, to build this infrastructure, we need $100 billion. And given this uh, Ukraine crisis and, uh, and, the cri and the COVID, we have to find a way to involve our private sector uh, to, to, to develop this infrastructure and to use also alternative infrastructure to respond to the need of Africa. As you know, the, ma the maturity level, ICT maturity in the continent is very low. We can install a lot of infrastructure, but the usage gap is still there. We have also this uh, gender digital divide hmm? in the continent. It's very huge as this gender digital, digital divide contributes to the poverty of the continent. In the content development, we contribute less to the internet, less than 2% to the internet. Skill development, we want to, how you, how you will be 70% of our population in 2015, and we want this youth to contribute to this four industrial revolution. We have to build the, the skill. It is very important to develop the skills in the digital sector for the youth. As you know, by 2030, 90% of the new job will be digital or will need a component digital. And why is a uh, now, as uh, several initiatives, I'm, I'm not going to highlight all initiatives, but let me highlight the key initiative of ECA. In the infrastructure, we are working with an uh, investment company to support African country to expand their infrastructure. We are uh, working with Africa 50 to expand the infrastructure on, in Guinea, Cameroon, Ethiopia also. In the development skills, we have initiated a new program focused on the youth, such as the girl aged between 12 and 25 years. The, we call it African Connected Coding Card. We work together with uh, African Union, ITU, UNESCO, and, and UN Women, uh, and as a partner. And as of today, we have 25,000 young girls trained in this uh, uh, program and uh, in digital skill, uh, internet of thing, intelligence, artificial, web gaming, uh, web, web development. And uh, we pledge to have 100,000 girls trained by 2025. And among them, we expect that 40% will 
continue their study on the ICT sector and 10% will become actor, key actor on the ICT. Why we develop another program called Technology African for Women, TAU program, to target the, the private sector such as the startup. In the capacity building also, we have this program with Alibaba to build the capacity on fintech startup. The program will start, uh, the second phase will start as the 1st January, and the target it is uh, to train 10,000 African startup on the several technology on, uh, on, on fintech. As you know, fintech is very, very important for the country given the mobile money uh, development, because we, in Africa, we also 70% of the account in the world. Second, it is very important to look at the, the cyber security, because we, we can't put in place all this infrastructure, all this application, without to secure the cyber space. And the cyber, the cyber crime is very negative for the African continent. Now, uh, last year, the cyber crime cost 10% of the GDP of the continent. It's a lot. Why in March we decided to organize the African Summit on Cyber Security? And one of the outcome of, the, of, this, uh, of this summit was the, the establishment of the Central African of Cyber Security uh, to be hosted in Lomé. We are working now on the, the government Togo and as a partner to put in place the cyber security. Hopefully, we'll launch this center uh, next year. In March also, we launched uh, the African uh, Research Center on Artificial Intelligence in Congo to respond to the need of African to be ready for the fourth industrial revolution. On digital skills also, we are working with uh, Rwanda to develop the STEAM Center. And uh, we, are, we already start the work, and uh, hopefully by next year we'll uh, launch this uh, center. On the area of policy, I think my, my colleague Moses of AC already uh, highlighted uh, the key development in the sector. I'm not doing coming uh, on this uh, key framework where we work together. Also, I f we have also in artificial intelligence to develop one strategy for the African continent, and we work closely together with uh, AUC, as well as uh, we are uh, now preparing the continent for this global digital compact. Will be the future for the policy framework in the world in digital technology. We, I think you have uh, some information about uh, this global digital uh, uh, compact. Uh, across several uh, sessions, but we'll organize a, speci a special meeting for African country early next year in, in order to get a lot of input for African government to see digital compact to be adopted in 2024. I would like to stop there and thank you all of you and uh, acknowledge also the presence of the minister of all uh, uh, representative of the members country, members of parliament, it is very important this session and hopefully we look forward to work together and to develop the digital agenda in Africa to make Africa ready for the for industrial revolution and to get this universal access in the continent for the benefits of our population. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, my good friend, uh, Dr. Sek, for, the, the, for these remarks. I think... Uh, you gave us uh, a lot of information, I think, for the audience to digest. And I think, uh, uh, feel free, you guys, if you need any information, further information, get in touch with Mokhtar and his team so that uh, you, will, uh, you will get involved in the activities that uh, they are prescribing. Uh, now, allow me to give the floor uh, to His uh, Excellency Honorable Gospel, uh, Gospel uh, Kazoro. Uh, the chair of the African IGF 2022, and the man who made it possible for us to be in uh, in Malawi, and I think uh, uh, you know uh, people who were there, they 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 can attest that it has it was one of the best uh, African IGF we 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 ever organized, and I think he was uh, personally involved in in all the details uh, related to the organization of the event, and uh, just a round of applause to His Excellency. And uh, we give the floor now to uh, uh, the, His Excellency for his uh, opening remarks. Uh, thank you very much. The representative of the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, Dr. Mark Tasek, representative of the African Union Commission, Mr. Moses 
by Ngana, chairperson of the 2022 African IGF MAD Stakeholder Advisory Group, Madam Mary Uduma, chairperson of the 2022 African IGF Malawi Organizing Team, Mr. Bram Fuzulani, esteemed on-site and uh, virtual delegates to the 2022 Internet Governance Forum, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon to you all. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Africans are known for energy. Good afternoon. <laughs> That's good. Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, allow me at the outset to express my gratitude to the government and the people of the Federal Republic of uh, Ethiopia for hosting us at this 2022 session of the Global Internet Governance Forum. I am sure all the delegates, especially those attending the forum physically, agree with me that the organization of this forum has been superb and congratulations to our Ethiopian brothers and sisters. You have really made Africa and indeed the global community so proud. A big hand for them. <laughs> Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, my task this morning is to simply present to you a report on how the 11th session of the African Internet Governance Forum, which was conducted and it was, was conducted and what critical issues the forum raised for consideration and reflection of continental and the global gathering. As you all recall, Malawi was honored and privileged to host the Africa Internet Governance Forum from 19th to 21st July 2022 in the capital city of Lilongwe. We hosted the forum under the theme, Digital Inclusion and Trust in Africa. And about 1,000 delegates were kind enough to join us physically in Lilongwe, and over 1,300 delegates joining us virtually. Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, during the Africa IGF in Malawi, I understood a point that we have been converging like this we have now for ages but our coming together will become meaningful only if they are followed by tangible results that will transform the lives of our people especially in Africa our continent will progress if substantial investment is made in the digital space to ensure that our people are connected to reliable, affordable, and secure internet connectivity that is coupled with relevant content. It is only through such investment that we will ensure that no one is left behind and that our people are appropriately positioned to effectively participate and benefit from digital economy and more importantly contribute towards the socio-economic development of their respective countries. Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the Africa Internet Governance Forum made several recommendations that African countries, with the support of the global community, must seriously consider. These recommendations mainly centered around continued efforts towards building technical capacity in African countries so that they are able to effectively participate in the digital space, promote coordination and knowledge sharing amongst African countries, and most importantly, take deliberate efforts to invest in young people and empower them to take leading roles in managing and sustaining the digital ecosystem. Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the government of Malawi, through my Ministry of Information and Digitalization, took the recommendations very, very seriously, and a lot of progress is being attained in that regard. Malawi is in the process of engaging community broadband operators that will, as local, that will operate as local internet service providers to ensure that even at the grassroots 
the citizens are able to access affordable internet connectivity. We are currently developing business models and licensing frameworks for implementation of this initiative. Our government, our government is also implementing a number of interventions that are targeting young people and empower them to tackle emerging digital issues such as artificial intelligence, internal internet of things, management of big data, cloud computing, just to mention a few. The government of Malawi is also supporting major tech hubs in the country to train and capacitate the youth with digital entrepreneurial skills. We have gone further to ensure that uh, digital and ICT skills are acquired from a very young age and presently we have rolled out an ICT programming project targeting primary school learners throughout Malawi. We, we strongly believe that uh, uh, digital uh, uh, proficiency must actually become a culture in Africa. The Minister of Education is working towards reviewing its curriculum to include ICT training from secondary and primary education. That will ensure that we train as many fingers as possible so that they are able to meaningfully participate uh, in the digital uh, capability uh, forums. We are also working towards having a smart city in the central region of Malawi called Mvera Smart City. We hope that this smart city will facilitate the acceleration of digital transformation in Malawi. Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the African IGF also underscored the importance of putting up robust frameworks, monitoring and evaluation processes in the implementation of the ICT projects. The government of Malawi, through technical and financial support from the United Nations Capital Development Fund, is implementing the inclusive digital economy scorecard that is capturing progress in the digital space for the key digital transformation enablers, namely digital infrastructure, digital skills, regulatory frameworks, policy and planning, and connectivity. The initiative is also measuring inclusivity of the youth, women, the elderly, immigrants, and those in the hard to reach areas throughout Malawi. Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is my strongest wish that the global community that has gathered at this year's Internet Governance Forum will take seriously all the issues and recommendations that will come out of this gathering. This is an opportunity for all of us to learn the best practices and solutions being implemented globally as far as advancing internet governance is concerned. Allow me, ladies and gentlemen, excellences, now to invite my compatriot, Mr. Bram Fuzulani, who was the chairperson of the 2022 African IGF Malawi Organizing Committee to present a detailed report of the Africa IGF that Malawi successfully hosted. I thank you all. I thank you for your attention. May God bless Africa. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Um, I will just proceed and say all protocols observed. Um, the tech team, if you can have the slides up on the screen uh, for the easier follow-up on the on the statistics. Just just to flip through the, the actual report, but I think the report is going to be available on the on the Africa IGF website for a detailed uh, recount of um, the minister's speech. Um, next slide. Yes, I think the statistics were already given by the Honorable Minister in terms of the participants. Uh, it was a four-day event uh, with the day zero, um, the normal way we conduct um, the, the IGF. But in terms of the reg total registrations, we had about uh, 1.8 um, registrations. And in person, 
but also those that attended virtually. You can go next slide, please. We, we took pride in the historic launch of the um, Africa Parliamentary Network on IG. I see Nena, I think Nema is not here with us. I don't know if she's, she's around, but um, we, took, we took pride in this as well, that it took place in Nilongwe during the Africa IGF, um, as uh, the events that took place with prior to the, to the actual uh, IG. But we also had the usual uh, School on Internet Governance um, that took place in Nilongwe. Some of the alumni are actually uh, with us here in this room. Um, Besides that, um, we also had the launch, of the, the actual Africa Youth IGF that took place. Um, it is very important that I think, um, you know, going forward with the report, there's, um, there's uh, outcomes that have come out that the youth voice needs to be amplified, it needs to be recognized, and I think we are seeing that at the global IGF where we have seen a number of uh, African youth taking, taking part in the panel discussions, but also raising their voices and taking the space. Um, I'm proud to say that these were some of the discussions that actually took place during the uh, Africa IGF. We also had the launch of the um, Network of Africa Women in Cybersecurity that happened uh, in Nilongwe as well. Um, yeah, so in terms of the actual outcomes, um, as I've already said, the forum recognized that the internet continues to be a tool but also an enabler for, for human resilience and solidarity in Africa. And therefore, it must remain secure, it, man, it must remain available, uh, but also affordable uh, to everyone else uh, across, across the continent. But how can we do this as a continent? And I think that is the question that is being answered um, within the report as part of the outcomes that we must develop policies, legislations, but we can only do this in a very multi-stakeholder approach, conservative process, engaging everyone else in the space, not just um, one stakeholder. Um, and therefore, this is very critical for us uh, going forward um, as, as, as Africans to, to take part in this global uh, digital economy. Um, next slide, please. As part of the uh, outcomes, um, we also, I think the most important aspect was the issue of the mass stakeholderism, uh, that it must continue and nurtured, but also it must uh, be seen to be done. Uh, there's a lot of discussion on mass stakeholderism, uh, but let little, I think, is done in practice uh, in many of our different um, jurisdictions and undertakings. And so this was also very amplified during the uh, Africa IGF. In terms of the actual uh, declarations, uh, we had quite a number of those that also uh, drawn from the from the um, from the summit itself, that we must advocate for policies, legislations, and technical and economic measures that promote digital inclusion, affordability, accessibility, availability, and security. Um, most importantly, I think as we're discussing this, I know it's, it's a di discussion that has been happening uh, even during the parliamentarian uh, track, the issue of ratifying some of the conventions, and key to it is the Malabo uh, Convention that has been specifically singled out. Uh, when you look at issues of data protection, uh, privacy, cyber security, um, there are statistics on how many countries, African countries, have actually uh, ratified uh, the com Malabo Convention. Um, and then the issue of promoting digital skills, um, awareness, training, but also uphold and promote, as I said, multiculturalism uh, participation in Indian gov governance discourse. And last um, is to ensure that African voice is heard within the global IGF. And I think that is what we are seeing. Um, probably we'll have a stock taking uh, session at a later stage, or as we proceed during the, 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 the course of the, of the year, uh, to ensure that indeed our voices, regardless of whether the youth, uh, different um, uh, stakeholders are being heard at the global level, uh, raising the issues that need to be raised at the global level, besides those being raised at the Africa IGF. I submit uh, the brief report on the um, uh, Africa IGF. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think we will have a very short presentation on PRIDA. Uh, Dr. Nambura, please. Uh, thank you, Adil, uh, the Honorable Minister, uh, our distinguished participants, all protocols observed. We really appreciate you taking time to be with us and learn what we have been doing at PRIDA, as well as the general African continent. So in 2018, there was an African Union declaration 
uh, on internet governance. And this de uh, declaration aimed at encouraging participation of African stakeholders in the global IG debate. And this is through policy, efforts, technical, and the like. And based on multi-stakeholder process on IG principles of open, accessible, resilient internet with localized IG debates and related policy matters. So this particular declaration is being implemented through PRIDA, and PRIDA is a continental project, Policy and Regulation Initiative for Digital Africa. And what we do at PRIDA, first of all, in 2018 when it started, is a four-year like project, 2018 to 2013, uh, to 2023 in June. And basically when the project started, we did uh, some studies to understand what is the landscape of uh, internet governance, our participation at the global and regional uh, activities, and we realized that we are missing as a continent, as Africans. And therefore, we came up with a strategy, and this strategy looked at uh, three major, uh, at two major areas. First of all, looked at streamlining ICT initiative at the continental level, but then also building capacity at that level. And uh, those are the two main areas that we aimed to, uh, to focus on. But then also, as we are doing our research, we realized that out of, 23, uh, out of the 55 African Union member states, 23 did not have any IG processes at the national level. And therefore, we embarked to support those countries uh, with the capacity building work. Let's continue. And how do we work as PRIDA? That at the national level, we work with the focal points. And these focal points mainly will find their ministries of ICT, the regulators, and the like, that is the government. But then we have the uh, national IG conveners, and that can be the private sector, the civil society, the academia, and the like. And then at the regional level, we have the, the regional conveners, and we also work with the regional economic communities. The case of uh, East African community, we have ECAS for Central Africa, we have ECOAS, and we have uh, SADC. So basically what we do is to work with these organs, mainly for sustainability purposes. And then when we come to the continental level, we have the African Union Commission, which is a secretariat, and at the global level, the whole idea is to go with a common agenda. So come 2020, uh, during COVID, uh, we wanted to do trainings uh, physically, but with COVID, we realized we had to be innovative and adapt to the new situation. So we came up with a new curriculum uh, that has seven modules that cuts across all the IG baskets, uh, maybe be cybersecurity, uh, law, economic development, and the like. And we embarked to support the 23 countries, but we divided them into chunks. We started with nine countries in 2020, uh, Botswana, Madagascar, Eswatini, Liberia, Egypt, Mauritania, Morocco, Comoros, and Cape Verde. And out of the nine countries we supported, five of them continued to do the IGF. Uh, in 2021, again, we embarked to support more countries, and this time we supported eight countries. I won't go through them. And out of these eight countries, uh, two of them did their IGF. But then also, in 2021, other countries started uh, expressing uh, interest. You see Nigeria. Nigeria has been holding their school of IGs and IGF over a long time, but they requested to use our PRIDA model. Also Liberia, that we had supported in 2020, they also requested for our support, which we did. Again, Continental School of IGs, they have been using our module. We have the West Africa School of IG. And uh, as mentioned, five of these countries continue to do their IGF. Come 2022, uh, the five, we still have seven countries out of the 23 that we really would want to support. And I'm looking forward to interacting to some of you who may be from those countries that we want to support you before the end of PRIDA project. That is June 2023, there's still time. And those countries are Algeria, Guinea-Bissau, Equatorial Guinea, Sao Tome, Prince, uh, Principal, uh, Angola, Libya, and Eritrea. So at the continent level, those countries ha do not have the IG systems at the national level. They have not done school of IG or an IGF. Would really want to work with you for the remaining part of PRIDA. Again, during, 27, uh, during this year, we have been working with UNECA to train the youth volunteers. And I'm sure you have seen them doing great work. And uh, basically, it was a five days uh, curriculum that we went through all these uh, uh, courses for them to appreciate what internet is and for them to be able to be more effective when supporting us here. So in, um, probably I don't even need to go through that because uh, uh, basically up to date we have trained more than about 1,500 people and uh, probably to emphasize on gender, 
that um, we always ensure that we have women participants in these courses, but I must say it has been challenging <laughs> despite the fact uh, uh, strategically ensuring that we go to them. I think for some reason we don't apply and we need women to be in this training. We also emphasize on the youth that most of our participants, are 50% uh, of the uh, participants are below the age of 30. And that is in recognition that we must move with our youth, we must move with our women, and I would want to encourage all of us, let us get to women to learn issues of IG. They affect us in many ways and we must really move with it. Let's continue. So basically that gives uh, us the overall uh, gender composition, completion rate, and the like. And uh, as you will note, our completion rate is about 30%, which is actually good going by the global standard of e-learning. So again, we encourage all of us to continue doing that. Let's continue. Uh, we don't have to go through that. So uh, going forward, what are our plan? That uh, for sustainability reasons, we are working with the Pan-African University to ensure that the courses now we have, and we have enlarged them to 10 modules, they can be offered either as a bachelor's or a master's course at the university level. And uh, with that, we did our testing in uh, September, October. We are having our first uh, pilot phase in uh, January. And again, we look forward to all of you to participate as volunteers to train these people. We work through uh, train the trainers program and we have trained quite a number of people who are, we are working with. Then again, we are working on the development of a child online policy strategy that uh, the director went through. So again, I will not emphasize on that. And the final thing is that coming to 2023, we do want to continue working with you. We do want to work with the seven countries. So if you can support us in reaching out to them, we really appreciate. We don't want to support other countries that would want to use our PREDA platform. Either you have held an uh, a school of IG or not, we are ready to work with you. And we also want to support Continental IGF next year. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Bram and uh, Nambura. Uh, before we open uh, uh, the Q&A session, I'll be remiss if I will not uh, give a shout to uh, our outgoing Mark Chair, Mary Duma, who was not able to be with us, but I'm, um, I believe she's joining us virtually. Hello, Mary. Uh, and also, uh, I want to recognize also the new chair, Lillian. Lillian, can you say a few words, please, before we start the Q&A? Um, thank you so much, Adil, and uh, a good afternoon to everyone. Indeed, I have very few words. Um, I'm happy for being honored to chair the next mug next year, 2023, and uh, following from the wonderful IGF held uh, this year in Malawi, I hope that uh, next year will be better, and I look forward to working with everyone in this room. Thank you. Uh, many thanks. Many thanks, Lillian. I think now we open a Q&A session. We have 15 minutes. Uh, let's take three questions at a time. Um, if you have questions, please raise your hands. We need ladies uh, to ask questions. <laughs> gender, we are talking gender. So I have one hand there. This is one. And then the lady is there. And uh, okay, there is a lady there. Uh, and then there is one here. This is the the, the first uh, uh, women. women, yes. Okay. Thank you, thank you very much. I'm from uh, Senegal, my name is Ndiaga, and I am a, from a civil society organization. From all presentation, there are a couple of words I did not hear, digital sovereignty. We have to understand, right now, digital technology has more risks than opportunity for Africa. Do we have the technology? No. Do we have the human resources? No. In Africa, all over the places, you have digital projects with biometric databases, design, implemented, and managed by foreign private companies. We need to understand, in this context, we have millions of people illiterate that are using the internet 
whose data is not protected, digital technology is not an opportunity. When it comes to data protection, the Malabo Convention elaborated in 2014, so far ratified only by 14 countries out of 55 in Africa. Sign it by eight countries out of 55. And we need 15 signatories to have it enforce it. What's going on in Africa? 55 countries. And we cannot have 15 signatories to have the Malabo Convention on Data Protection and Cybersecurity enforce it. So given this context, technology, digital technology is not opportunity for Africa. And we have to understand that technology has to be built from the ground up. No leapfrog, no shortcut. And we have to learn from American technology about Chinese technology. They stay away from 5G, uh, Chinese 5G. TikTok has been banned from, from America. We did to ask to ask why is this happening? Thank you very why much. Why America is having this position? You are because, just five seconds. Because America don't want what they used to do to other people spying on them using technology, Chinese do the same with their technology. So they stay away from it. So why Africa, we have to import everything. We're not producing nothing. We're importing everything. So the work of African Union should focus on digital sovereignty for Africa. We have to build our own technology from the ground up. That's the way to go. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, please be uh, short because we want to allow time for others to ask questions and make interventions. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, first of all, thank you to all of our panelists for, for sharing. It's really been uh, wonderful to hear about all the, the work that's happening. Um, my name is Carolyn. I work with the civil society organization as well. And I think if we're going to have a conversation about, about meaningful connectivity and its relationship to human rights, it's also important to have a conversation about internet shutdowns. Um, it's an issue that's, you know, that is affecting millions all around the world, and it's an issue that's very prevalent across the entire continent. And it would be wonderful to hear from our panelists from the African Union how you intend to engage on the issue of internet shutdowns and how uh, how you intend to support the people who are affected by internet shutdowns and to helping to bring an end to this issue. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very much. You can use my mic. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Tokomiya. And uh, my point is very excitedly on the topic of gender. We are here to talk about not only achieving gender um, training and curriculums and programs of which I've got to commend all the various bodies that are here and the works that have been done. We've had a uh, opportunity to host a Women in Tech Policy Hub uh, alongside Prida and Girl Hive from South Africa. As well as that, we've also had a chance to hold a Women's Summit while at the IGF, which has been a great part of the program as one of the Day Zero events. Um, and we have a youth track which was organized by various members of, of the youth community within the IGF space and um, there's so many training initiatives that have been mentioned here today and it's so important that we're able to see their um, both their prevalence both their impact but more importantly that the discussions don't end with training programs that the we're not here to train we're here to create impact and change right so the ultimate goal is change the ultimate goal is to see ICT practitioners to see IGF practitioners as females to see diplomats and to see the, the tables represented um, showing all gendered bodies, you know, um, also not just men and female, but allowing conversation to, to be transformative and to create the kind of change that we want to see. So uh, less than a question, I have a, a, a comment, which is I implore everyone in this room to not only just look at uh, the training, but to look at when making decisions and when um, organizing fora to ensure that there are seats present for all members and that there is parity. I see so many women in this room. I see so many diverse peoples in this room and it's amazing to see that. So let's not just leave it here, but rather let's actually work towards creating the impact that we want to see in our society. Thank you.
Uh, so let's give, give the floor to our panelists to answer question. I think basically we have two questions, uh, one with relating to digital sovereignty and then the other one shutdowns and meaningful connectivity. Yeah, th let, let me start with the one on digital sovereignty. Uh, indeed, uh, digital sovereignty actually is one of the guiding principles of the digital transformation strategy for Africa. If you go to the digital D transformation strat strategy for Africa, it's a clearly elaborated that uh, digital sovereignty is one of our guiding principles. So we do uh, also um, uh, take it as uh, an important issue uh, when we are dealing with digitalization. However, I would also want to say that uh, uh, as much as it may be, uh, uh, I think it is two-faced. It is an opportunity, but we also have to be careful. Uh, all these efforts have to be done in a multifaceted way. Uh, we can't say either this or this. Uh, so while we are trying to enhance uh, digital connectivity and digital transformation on the continent. Uh, we are aware of the risks and it is up to us to bear it in mind and put mitigation risks to ensure that it, uh, we do not, uh, it does not uh, uh, turn to something else other than an opportunity. Um, for example, of course, even all these initiatives that I mentioned, uh, one thing is we are aware that uh, even the data issue, as we move to the data economy, uh, yeah, most of our data, are we in control of it? We need to work on the data infrastructure to be able to s store our data, analyze it, and use it for the benefit of our citizens. Uh, of course, you we realize that even if you go to the internet traffic, same room here, I can send an email to someone and it has to go to Europe to come back to the same person next to me. Uh, all, all, all those are things that we are aware of and we are working on, but it does not stop us uh, to, 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 to be part of this whole uh, fourth industrial uh, revolution. So my, my take on this, yes, I agree with you on one hand, uh, but indeed let's not t take it as, uh, uh, let's also look at it, look at the benefits, because they are, they are benefits, but we have to, uh, to make sure we handle all this in a multifaceted, multifaceted way, because that's what will make us to be competitive in the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, the last one on uh, internet shutdowns. Um, yeah, of course, that is uh, as an AU commission, you know, uh, we internet sh shutdowns, of course, happen. I think if the, the few that happen, it's a debatable issue and a political issue. Uh, sometimes it happens at member states. Uh, there are reasons also that they give us on why it happens, if it has to happen. Uh, but it is a, a subject that really uh, that I will uh, continue being engaged on. Uh, I can't uh, comment much on that because uh, uh, it is a, a sovereignty issue at national level. Thank you. Uh, my colleagues may add to what I have said. Thank you very much, Moses. I think for the internet shutdown, uh, the principle of uh, IGF, it is uh, open access, access to everybody. And we, we, we encourage all countries to open internet to everybody in the world. It is, uh, as Moses said, it is something politics uh, for some countries, but we are working with them uh, to come up uh, a common understanding of uh, why internet is important and internet or access internet also is part of the human right. Digital sovereignty also, it is very important, digital uh, sovereignty. When we, as both say, we have, we, have, we have adopted this African digital transformation strategy in 2020, and one of the key pillar guiding principle is uh, digital sovereignty. And now we are at the implementation phase as a m member state. 
of course, the first uh, thinking is we should have a sovereignty on our data. Yeah, it is very, and why we are working now with uh, several countries to put in place their own data center, as well as we have this data governance framework adopted last this year by uh, AUC Head of State. Uh, and it, as are something very important, you touch upon something very important on the Malabo Convention. Yeah, we have to ask a question of ourselves. We agree, fully agree with you. Why at the UNECA sometime, you know, if, uh, country adopted uh, this uh, Malabo Convention, but they use uh, the, the Budapest for, for their policy. And there are something uh, missing maybe in the Malabo Convention and why we are going to launch in, uh, in, in five minutes the uh, guideline model law for cyber security for African country to complete what is missing in the Malabo Convention. And hopefully the f we'll get one country more soon to, get, to have 15 countries to ratify this Malabo com Convention. But it's a very good framework for the continent. I think uh, I invite all delegates here uh, to sensitize their government to adopt, to, to ratify this uh, Malabo Convention. And I think the minister, honorable minister here, will help us uh, to discuss with as a minister during the STC or as a fora to get this country uh, signing this Malabo, ratify this Malabo Convention. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, indeed, uh, just if I want to add something on the shutdowns, I think the, uh, the issue was uh, articulated very well, but also, if you all recall, this is a multi-stakeholder, uh, you know, uh, forum, and then it's not only in articulating the issue, also in solving the issue. So we, um, we, uh, you know, we ask all the stakeholders uh, to come together so that if there are some uh, uh, proposal for solution and as as to how to mitigate the issue of shutdown, because countries they have reasons, but we need to also help them with the how to attack those issues that they are facing so let's get together in a multi-stakeholder way so that we can help the countries uh, resolve this issue once and for all before i open the question um, oh the minister want to say something uh thank you very much i think he uh, what has been put on the table is a very very interesting discussion a very dis uh, imp important topic um i think africa as it is, I think we all know where we are coming from and we know where we are. Um, uh, history has taught us so many things. Uh, right now, Africa could have been speaking one language, but you go on the other side of Africa, people are speaking Portuguese. The other side of Africa, people are speaking French. And the other side of Africa, uh, others Germany, others English. Uh, that has been a very negative cultural construction, I must say. Uh, because the, uh, it's only through a common culture that can actually can bring us together. So this uh, uh, fourth industrial revolution, I think, offers us another uh, opportunity to governize our, our unity and being one. Uh, if we allow to be divided, if we allow negative imperialism, in fact, there isn't anything like positive imperialism, but if we allow imperialism to also come, and you do what it did during the scramble of Africa using uh, the digital capabilities, then I think uh, we will be doomed. I am hoping that those uh, that are um, having to look at these things from a very technical level, uh, at the EU technical uh, level, uh, should be able to be very honest, but again, must be as patriotic as possible, so that uh, when we are coming to um, uh, you know, coming up with a position, and again, when we are coming up with uh, an agreement, or when we are coming uh, with an issue that will bring uh, Africa together, we must be speaking one internet language. We must be speaking one policy language. We might be, we must be speaking uh, and moving towards uh, one direction. Uh, already, um, <clears throat> what is happening in the ratification or in the signing of the La Malabo uh, Convention? Uh, is something we didn't need to pay a uh, little detail uh, as to exactly what is happening. Uh, why are other countries not signing? What is happening? Who are they talking to? Because we might be sitting in this forum or we might be sitting as Africans, but our, our psyche is actually fed or is uh, directed by a totally different civilization or a totally different thinking. I think that's very dangerous for the future. And I think we are the generation to 
um, to make very difficult decisions decisions that are not selfish decisions that will see those that are coming after us um, are, you know finding a better Africa because as you know um, digital is the future and uh, whatever we decide now uh, we will also um, uh, decide the complexion of Africa that we are going to have, decide the structure of Africa we are going to have, the success of Africa that we are going to have. So these, these issues should be discussed and discussed very well, not just uh, uh, passing through the motion and then we are out of there, but then we go back and uh, we are not uh, making progress. We really need to, to be very solid and very deep and make sure that we are indeed coming up with an African uh, position. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, before we uh, maybe we take one or two questions, let me give the floor to Andriette. Do you want to add something? Here? Um, thanks very much, Adele. I'm Andriette Esterhuisen, uh, outgoing chair of the African IGF MAG, outgoing Ch not chair, member, chair of the Global IGF MAG, and convener of the African School of Internet Governance, and I'm with the Association for Progressive Communications. I just wanted to commend the African Union um, Commission for, for all the contribution that you've made to capacity development, and to thank you for your participation and support of the African School of Internet Governance. I see many alumni in the room. You can raise your hands. Um, from the African school and we would not have been able to achieve this um, since 2013 without the collaboration of the African Union Commission. And, and then I just want to draw the attention, particularly in response to the comment on shutdowns, and I think the minister spoke such wise words, I, 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 I support all of them, um, to an organ of the African Union, which is the African Commission on Human and People's Rights which um, produced a soft law protocol in 2019, uh, the African Declaration of Principles on Freedom of Expression, which has very helpful provisions on independence of regulators, access to information, expression, and it also addresses this, this challenging issue of shutdowns. Um, it also has a protocol on access to information during elections. You know, which is one of the concerns, one of the links to the shutdown challenge. So I think I just want to echo what the minister said. We need to have serious conversations, really in-depth conversations about this challenging issue of shutdowns. And when we do so, let's draw on our own African instruments um, that have been created by African stakeholders and endorsed by the African Union's um, organ, the African Commission on Human and People's Rights. Thank you very much. We we already over time, but let's take one comment uh, or a couple of questions. Uh, one and two. This the guys that uh, real quick, please, very quickly. Yes, thank you, uh, Adil or Chairman. Mine is a quick comment that I think <coughs> what we need to focus on is Africa. Is whatever is agreed is Africa. Let's implement. That will make a difference. Because, for example, we are talking about 4IR. What are we doing about 4IR? 4IR will come and pass, and then we're going to the next phase again. So I think the best is let's implement whatever is agreed, and that will make a difference in our continent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the other gentleman, real quick. OK. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, my name is Asnaka from Ethiopia. I would like to suggest one opinion. Regarding to my opinion, uh, African Union should be supported young intellectual research institution in corner of any African countries, so that the young and intellectual capacity of uh, African young entrepreneurs and intellectual will be producing in Africa. This shows that each country of Africa should or uh, must have the center of excellence for young children in Africa, because without children of Africa, Africa is meaningless. Therefore. We have to open new dynamics for research and technology innovation for young and children in Africa. Thank you very much. Very much. Well said. I think uh, you want to say something? Uh, observing the protocol, I am just uh, soliciting support from the Secretariat and uh, members uh, to support the Nigerian bid for hosting the IGF 2023. We have already submitted our request. Uh, in Malawi uh, um, this year. Thank you. 
Uh, this is well noted. Thank you very much. I think with that, we come to the conclusion of this uh, meeting. And we thank you all for participating and engaging. Uh, we, uh, we asked the uh, IGF Secretariat to give us more time, but unfortunately, we only have one hour. And we can continue this conversation maybe outside, uh, when we meet outside. But thank you very much for coming. Uh, thank you very much, uh, His Excellency, and uh, see you. Thank you.